Okay, week eight, I call this uh, springs and threads, or springs and things. I'm going to show you how to make a spring. We do that with a helix command. So I would go to a curve and helix. Here's the helix dialog box. As you see, it creates one right away. So we have a diameter or a radius for the helix. Uh, I'm making it a 20 millimeter diameter. The pitch is the angle or the, the distance from one, one loop around is the distance it travels vertically. Uh, I'm going to make the limit 50 millimeters high. And the right hand thread, right hand turn by default. So we'll say OK. There we have a helix, which is just a sketch, a 3D sketch in space. We're going to use a sweep along guide to create a little circle here, the wire diameter right on the end. So let's go to sketch and pick this datum plane. And we're going to put a little circle here about, uh, about three millimeters diameter. And then we're going to make sure we dimension it so from this vector to the center point make this 20 no 10 and then this distance here this auto distance there so we put the center of the circle right on the end of the helix and we'll finish that and then by using the sweep along guide which is under surface more and sweep along guide. Sweep along guide allows you to take a section, which is that's the section right there. So we click on the section, and then the guide is the path we want it to go or to extrude along. There we go. The offsets are in case you want to make it a hollow uh, spring, hollow. And the first offset would be from the sketch. It would be outward. I think it's outward. Let's give it a one dimension, one millimeter. Sorry, that's inward. So one, one millimeter in. And then the second offset would be outward. So you're using, in this case, you're using the sketch as, I think I might have to do minus one. There we go. Uh, you're using the sketch to identify the two surfaces, inward and outward. If you just want a hollow, you just make them zero. If you just want one offset, um, if you just did the second offset, it would just make it bigger than the sketch. Okay, so there's that. It's kind of hard to measure a spring. If you have a spring for your final project, uh, you're going to have to you have a couple things you need to know for it. You need to know the outside diameter of the spring, so measure that. You're going to need the free length of the spring, so measure it when it's just sitting free. You're going to have to have probably uh, a, a dimension for the, the length of the spring you want to model. Uh, this is a compression spring where you uh, load the spring by compressing it. If the coils are not touching, then it's typically loaded by compressing it. If the coils are touching, that's an extension spring and it's loaded by pulling it apart. If it's an extension spring, there's usually some hooks on the end. Sometimes they just take the spring and bend it upward on the ends and make a loop. But there usually has to be something to, to grab onto it by. Uh, so we'll show that too, how to create something like that. Oh, you also need to know the wire diameter of the spring. So identify a spring by four things its overall length its outside diameter its wire diameter and its k value which is a constant um, is usually uh, grams per centimeter or something uh, it's how much force it takes to to extend it you know one inch or one centimeter let's go back to the sketch and let's say the sketch is out here at say uh, 15. so what happens if you try to sweep along a guide but the this section is not on the guide. Finish that sketch. Here's what happens. We get a sinusoidal pattern. If I 
go back into the helix itself and make that a little longer like the length is 150 you'll see the pattern a little better and if I go front view you see that so it's starting at 15 out so it's at plus 5 out and it goes to minus 5 in and then goes back out so it's doing this sometimes you need this kind of a shape with the spring like in a battery compartment for a toy or something or that little coil spring to hold the battery in okay let's make a let's make a hook on the end so with a hook we need to come from here we need to go a half radius in so let's do a sketch get out of that one first go into the sketch and let's go on yeah this plane I'm actually on the bottom of the coil, so let's turn it over and hit F8. There we go. You know, I usually, when I'm in a 2D sketch, I usually want it in 2D, but sometimes when you're working with it, you need to tip it sideways. So that's what I'm going to do. So we need to arc from this point. Let's try that again. We need to arc from center point to here and I'm going to stretch it until it goes tangent to there and finish that sketch and then I want to tip it vertically so I'm going to do a sketch on this plane so I'm on that blue plane and I'm going to go from here from the end point somewhere over there and I want to make it tangent again uh, see. that's tangent that's really big though so I'm going to change this to this should be about a radius of about five so it's the same size notice those two arcs are tangent to one another let's close it Okay, well, I can one more dimension on here. There you go. Usually an open loop so you can hook it, finish it. And then we're going to go back to Sleep Along Guide. Our section is again this, and our guide is this and that. Well, there we go. So sometimes you have a, uh, a coil like that, and sometimes you have a extrude of a surface of a face edge. And let's take this face and extend that up. Sometimes you might have seen a spring with a straight hoop on it. So you can make any shape you want, okay? You can even make a coil of a coil. Uh, think of a, like a toaster, you'd have a coil um, and the helix in, in the simplest helix it, it just goes along a, a straight line here uh, you can also do let me show you this is a helix around a helix so if you need to make like a heating element you know you can do this so the, the so the helix can be put along any path okay what if you had a different shape down here let's go back into this uh, let's get rid of the sweep. Oh, let's, let's get rid of this. Yes, let's change our sketch from this shape. Let's say we wanted to make a thread. We had a thread that wasn't a simple thread. Maybe it was like on a pencil sharpener. A pencil sharpener has like a worm gear thread, and the tooth of that thread is sharp, so it cuts a pencil. I think it looks something like a hollow cut and like that and I'm just going to assume that everything's okay here everything's right finish that sketch Let's see we don't need the sketch or that sketch and I think I suppressed a extrude here so there we go we have that extrude I'm going to turn it off right now though because I want to show you this thing. Now, we can't do a sweep-along guide with this because 
What you didn't notice from the spring circle is that as this rotates around the helix, it also rotates on itself. So if you just try to do sweep along guide and make this your section and this your guide, you get the following. And that looks pretty weird, huh? Oh, and it's hollow, which means I do not have the sketch connected. So let's back it up. Let's go back into the sketch. Yeah, right there in that corner. Let's make it connected. Okay, finish it. Let's do that again. See, so that little piece there, that sketch is actually rotating about itself. Let me show you. I'm going to color um, face here. So you can see it. I'm going to make it like yellow. So as you can see that inside, it's rolling out to the outside and then rolling back inward again if it were to keep going up. So what we need to do is we need to keep this inside vertical edge, what they call face normal to the cylinder that is going around. And in order to, to do that, we need the sweep command. So first we need to give me a face to go normal to or perpendicular to. And then we're going to use the sweep command. There is a Word document that tells you how to do this under course documents on Blackboard if you need to do this and I'm not around to help. So we're going to go select the curve. We have to pick the section. Pick the guide, which is the helix. Then we have to pick a orientation face normal. You pick the face you want to be normal or perpendicular to and there we go. And sometimes it's hard to exactly get your pitch right, so you can always go back to the helix and change the pitch. I think this would be about three, should make those threads on top of one another, like this. Okay. And sometimes threads, no, I think when it, when it makes the thread, it's not united to the cylinder, which is kind of a good thing, because a lot of times threads on a bolt do not go the whole... Um, the whole cylinder up, it stops before the head. So we're going to go on a plane here and show you how to get rid of threads, like near the, near the, come on, near one end. So you just go through. Now the threads are not connected to the center part. So I'm going to just pick this to subtract from, and there you go. That's how you clip the threads off. Usually the threads are, are cut out into the cylinder, so you could also put a larger cylinder on top of it. But when you get done, it should be united. Uh, you can always just use the regular thread command, like this, pick a surface, you want a detailed thread, it will grab that surface and look for, in its library, NX will look for a thread that's nominal that size and try to create one. Uh, since this is a 20 millimeter diameter shaft, it probably can't find one very easy, but it's trying, let's see. Okay, so if you're just doing a screw, just use the thread command for your project. Make a, a nut thread and a bolt thread the same size thread and that'd be close enough for your project. Typically in the assembly you need the threads on there uh, because the part has a has a thread but the threads are going to be really hard to see at the scale where you can see the whole project in the thread in the assembly.